Milarepa was born in 11th century in a small village in Tibet. His father died when he was a small kid. His father was a big businessman. In the last moments of his life, he summons his brother and passes his business and property to him and asks him to look after the family after he is gone. After his father's demise, Milarepa and his family is mistreated by his uncle and they are treated like servants in their own home. When Milarepa grows up to become a young man, his uncle denies the rights of the property and home. Bewildered and angry by the uncle's decision, Milarepa's mother calls upon the villagers for help. The villagers instead choose side with his uncle. Angered with the turn of events, his mother sends Milarepa to a tantric with some essentials in his bag to learn some practices. The tantric becomes the first guru of Milarepa. On coming across the story of Milarepa and his family, he initiates Milarepa into the tantric tradition. After completing his education in a few years, Milarepa goes back to his village. On returning home, he comes to know that his mother and his sister are already dead because of poverty and hunger. Milarepa can't take this and yearns to take revenge. Milarepa gets a chance to avenge his family when his uncle's son is arranged to get married. In the occasion of the wedding, everyone in the village is in, invited to their home. On the day, Milarepa goes on the mountain top and brings about a big storm in the village with rain and thunder with the knowledge that he learned from the tantric. His uncle fa uncle's family died in the storm and the house was totally damaged. This brings in great pleasure to Milarepa, but as the day passes, his peace turns into regret. After a few days, Milarepa realizes his mistakes and starts repenting for what he has done. He goes back to his guru and tells him everything about what happened. Hearing this, the Guru is greatly saddened. He tells Milarepa, if he wants to break the bondage of this bad karma and become a good human being, he has to deepen his spiritual practices and go deeper into meditation. For this purpose, the Guru sends Milarepa to a renowned spiritual Guru by the name of Marpa. From here starts the real spiritual journey of Milarepa. He goes on searching Marpa. When he finally arrives to Marpa's village, he meets some children who take him to a field where he meets a farmer who gives him food and some work to do. After the day's work, the farmer takes Milarepa home. When reaching home, Milarepa comes to know that the farmer is no one but Marpa. On coming to know about Milarepa's story, Marpa denies the spiritual training to him. This saddens Milarepa greatly. After a lot of pleading, Marpa tells Milarepa that he can work for him, but Marpa will never allow any spiritual education to him. In the hope of impressing Marpa with his good work and gain spiritual knowledge, Milarepa stays. Marpa asks Milarepa to build a three-world house. This work would have taken years to be completed. But Milarepa is enthusiastic and starts building the house alone. 
In all the passing years, many disciples visit Marpa and gain spiritual knowledge from him. But Milarepa is denied anything. One day Milarepa gets an idea. He disguises himself and sits between Marpa's disciples in the hope of gaining knowledge. When Marpa sees Milarepa, he calls upon him and dishonors and mistress, mistreats him in presence of everyone. Milarepa becomes sad and cries on being mistreated. One day when Marpa catches Milarepa hiding and listening his discourses, he employs his disciples in beating him up and mistreats him again. Milarepa cries in despair every time such things occur. In the same Milarepa has to face mistreatings from his guru a number of times. When Milarepa finishes building the three-walled house, Marpa destroys it and tells Milarepa that he should build a four-walled house now. Since Milarepa doesn't have any options, he makes a house with four walls in a few years. Marpa again destroys the house and tells him to make five-walled house. Milarepa obliges and accepts it and starts building it, although it would take years for him. The whole story unfolds in the presence of Marpa's wife. She loved Milarepa like a child and had great sympathy for the poor soul. She pleads Marpa to accept Milarepa as his disciple, but Marpa rejects her pleadings, saying he isn't worthy enough. One day, she cannot take Milarepa's sufferings and sends him to another guru for spiritual training. She does this by writing a letter to the guru and puts a seal of Marpa on it. When Milarepa goes to him, the guru accepts him with open arms, seeing the letter from Marpa. After several months of training, the Guru is dejected to see that there is no progress in Milarepa. The Guru is confused to see this. After some time, the Guru is called to visit Marpa. He decides to take Milarepa with him. Marpa scolds the Guru for taking away Milarepa and initiating him in spiritual practices. The Guru tells him about the letter and Marpa becomes enraged with anger. He starts mistreating and dishonoring Milarepa again. Milarepa is now convinced that Marpa will never accept him as a disciple. And he decides to end his life when suddenly he is called upon by Marpa. Milarepa becomes fearful but still goes back to Marpa, confused what Marpa will do with him. But Marpa hugs Milarepa and tells him that you are my best disciple, the one I truly love. By mistreating Milarepa, by making him work hard, by dishonoring him, he was only wiping the past karmas and destroying his ego. And to a large extent, he was successful in that, he tells his wife. But a little ego was still left and now only yoga can help him destroy the remaining ego. He accepts Milarepa as his disciple and helps him with his guidance. When Milarepa does penance in a cave for several years, Milarepa became the first human to go to Kailash mountain, to the peak. When he finishes his sadhana on the mountain, he comes back to Marpa and sees Devi Dakini in deep meditation. She asks him a few spiritual questions 
that Milarepa wasn't able to answer. He takes the questions to Marpa, to which even Marpa cannot answer. Marpa decides to visit his guru Naropa in India and asks him the questions. Naropa asks Marpa, who exactly got these questions from Devi Dakini? Marpa says, it's his disciple Milarepa. Marpa is delighted to hear this and says, finally, there is light in the east and gives him all the answers and sends him to Milarepa. Milarepa goes on with his journey in the spiritual world and finally attains enlightenment. Milarepa has been a great guru who helps many people, has many disciples and is still revered in Tibet and elsewhere in the world.